Okay, looking forward to uh, getting the week started. Uh, you know, another road division game against Jacksonville. Obviously, uh, a good football team, a well-coached team. Obviously, have a close relationship with Coach Peterson. Um, great coach, obviously Super Bowl winning coach. Um, so he'll, I know he'll have them ready. Our object here is for us to get ready. Um, you know, really focus, bring focus and intensity day by day to our work on the details and uh, improve from last week. Um, obviously yesterday you saw we released uh, Blankenship. I uh, certainly appreciate Rod's contribution. Um, did some good things for us. It was just a change that we thought we needed to make. Um, and obviously you saw we signed the two kickers. Um, you know, really the plan was they both had really outstanding workouts and we just, so we signed them both just wanting more time to evaluate that decision um, and then, uh, you know, make a decision later in the week. And then uh, lastly, uh, Alec Pierce did develop some mild concussion symptoms uh, after the game and he is in the protocol. Yeah, no, yeah, good question. Um, I suppose everything is an option. That was not, that's not really, okay. we're not really thinking that. What was the deciding factor with Rod? Yeah, it was a tough call. Um, but I think, as you guys said the other day, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we brought in competition a couple different times, and, and Rod just had some really good moments for us. Um, I, when I talked to Rod yesterday, I think Rod will, I think Rod will end up having a successful career. Um, Sometimes in this business, you just need to make a change of what you think is best for our team. And that was just, it was a tough decision, but one we thought we had to make. Will Chase's history here have any impact that it has to help him, I would think? No doubt. I mean, we, we, Chase is, you know, he's an A plus person. Um, he had a really good workout uh, yesterday. So that familiarity certainly plays a factor. Frank, we asked you about this. Uh, you know, just a couple days ago, but is there sort of a practice plan yet for Shaq? Yeah, I'm anticipating it'll be like last week. Uh, I'm anticipating he'll be full today. Something, you know, we're in pads today, so last week we went pads on Thursday. We're going to go pads on Wednesday this week. So sometimes, you know, when a guy gets out there, it can always change, but I'm anticipating full. Frank, you had some success going up tempo in the fourth quarter. Is that something with Matt Ryan's skill set that you might try to do a little bit more of? You know, we, we've talked about it the whole offseason. You know, we, for us, we look at it as like a, a tool that you have in your tool belt that um, sometimes when you're struggling a little bit, you, hey, let's go no huddle for a couple series. Um, and it can give you a spark. It can also backfire, you know, and it can also backfire. But um, with a guy like Matt, certainly would, that'll, that'll remain kind of in the tool belt for we can hopefully break out when needed. Is having two left tackles optimal, or would you rather – able to focus in on one guy and let him play 100 percent yeah no I, I obviously i think you know optimal is you know you know who your guy is but um right and right now matt Pryor is our guy so you know right now he's our guy um and he's he played well um and he played well so um really the plan is just rotate and burn you know i think he played whatever the two series so We'll continue to do that. We'll continue to do some rotation like that and uh, continue to give him opportunities to develop. What did you see out of Paris Campbell his first game back after kind of what he's been through? And, and what, did it, what does it mean for him to have kind of a game with 70 snaps? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I think just like you said, that, that many snaps and then really good. He made a couple plays at the end, a couple big third down conversions, you know, kind of a short one there where, you know, he and Matt just kind of connected on, on a tough third and two conversion and then on a deeper conversion. Um, so I thought it was a good start for Paris. I know, I know last year going into Jacksonville, there was a lot of pressure on this team making the playoffs. Now you find yourself, I, don't, I'm not, I know it's early, I'd say you must win, but like, what is the message knowing that you got to try to find a win here? Yeah, no, it's, there's no question. I mean, the, the message is 1-0. and oh. I mean, um, you know, that's going to be our goal every week. You know, what, what you continue to find is, that that's the best focus for us. Um, no matter what's happened the week before, can't, don't worry about what's ahead. Let's just go one and zero this week. There's obviously it's a road division game. You know, talked about this today, especially with our young guys. Division games are kind of count double in many respects. So, um, but what does that really do? What we talked about is it just brings attention to what 
to be present now, you know, out of practice in meetings and really get it right to give us the best chance to execute on Sunday. With Alec in protocols, how does that affect the rest of the receiver room and maybe the pressure of having to step up even more? Yeah, I think those guys, if, if he stays in the protocol and isn't available for the game, I think the guys will handle it well. Um, as we've mentioned, we kind of had those four guys, you know, really the, it's Pitt and then those other three guys have been kind of just rolling rolling in there together. So um, I, I think we'll be in good shape if, if he doesn't get out of protocol in time. Um, and we'll make whatever moves are necessary uh, at that time. What is that relationship like with, uh, with Coach Peterson? I know you've got your history. You haven't, you've faced him before as head coaches. Has the relationship changed much? Do you still talk to him? I know you're going to be facing him twice every year now. No, yeah. I'm, yeah, very close relationship. Talk to him frequently. Um, you know, obviously not during the season, but in the off season, uh, you know, a couple times a month, just catching up. But to think the world of him, great class act person, really great football coach. Um, it's kind of exciting. Uh, you know, he's in our division. You know, um, their offense is very similar to our offense, so that's kind of a unique dynamic. You know, just watching their offense a little bit, they're still doing. You know, very similar, a lot of similar characteristics. Baseball analytics make a lot of sense. 162 games, it's going to work out. How much have you, have you considered that, that football is such a small sample size that maybe analytics aren't so important? Yeah, I think it's a good point. And I think that um, you have to weigh that in those decisions. Um, now, the analytics in football are based off of, you know, they will tell you millions of iterations, you know, um, how they, I don't know all the science behind it, but I know as I, we sat down a couple of years ago with these companies and listened to how they do it. Um, yeah, there's history, but then the iterations that they run of all the possibilities, it's a lot. But with only 17 games um, and fewer scenarios, yeah, I, you do factor that in. I factor it in, for sure. And the other question was, um, I'm guessing that you, you've got some several things that aren't analytic-based. Like, you knew what the numbers were and you said, no, I'm doing this. Can you give an example maybe recently where a play that worked hmm. or Oh, man, I'm, I hate to disappoint you, but I, you know, I, I don't have one off the top of my head. Usually, um, I'm usually not more great. Usually what I'm doing is the analytics is say go and I don't go. When I go against the analytics, it feels to me like 99% of the time, the analytics are always more aggressive, right? And, and you guys think I'm aggressive, but the analytics are even more aggressive. I'm I'm I, I'm very tempered and moderate in my mind, and uh, what the goal call what we like what percentage was the go? Yeah, it was like I, I mentioned it. Like we have, they're kind of on blocks, and so um, I think it would like it'll be green. There's green. There's green plus one. Green plus two. If I remember, I think that was a green plus two, and and then when I like for instance on you're talking about the, this yeah, last one, green you know. Plus two. You know how like on a graph, uh, yeah, that's our kind of code. Like, you know, like on a graph where there's blocks. So um, there's, a, there's a block and it says, okay, it turns green. But then there's another, basically another notch and then another notch. So it can go up to as high as you want. But usually, like black belt, black belt exactly, exactly. So, so you say strong go, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll say to those guys, let's say it's green, and I'll say, is it dark green? You know, um, meaning is it a really strong go or is it light green? You know, that, like that was kind of a, it wasn't super strong, but it wasn't light. It was kind of, it was kind of, it was probably a solid go. Maybe, it's not analytic. When you've got a new kicker, will that change how you approach games and where you don't have quite as much confidence? I don't know. Yeah, uh, good, good, good point. So, like, the way that all factors in is, like, there's, there's on the charts, you, when the kicker's uh, gets a grade, and, and it's like a sliding scale. And so when I meet with John Park and George Lee, you know, John will tell me, he'll tell me, hey, here's where we have our kicker graded right now. So when you have a guy who you have more history with and more know, and you know, but he's, hey, we got, a, we got a new guy, so here's where we have him graded. I know what that means, so then I can factor that into the moment. So for example, if he's already made three kicks in the game, and, and I know that the charts are kind of moderate for him or medium because he's new, I'm like, oh no, he's got confidence right now, so I might have a little bit more 
you know, boom. And on the other end, if he's missed one or two, then I, then you can factor those things on the go. You've got, you've got to relearn your trust in Chase. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, it's for sure. to say hey, last we won't have to do a lot to get these guys' attention this week, not simply because it's a Jacksonville game uh, or a division game, but because of who you're playing. There's not a guy on this roster who's one down there with this team. Yeah, I totally feel that, Zach. I mean, I walk into the meeting room on Monday. I walk into the meeting room today. They know and, who they're yeah, it's like, okay, I could just turn around and walk out. You know, I mean, like, we're dialed in. You know, we're dialed in. We're ready to go. They just – they lost their opener, you know. So, uh, this, is, this is a home division game for them. I'm sure Coach Peterson is – having the same experience right now. So that's what's so stinking great about this game. You got two teams who this is a significant battle um, early in the year, means a lot, and uh, both teams will be ready to play.